you the power of God I, I don't know but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels I just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of Jesus I don't know where you are but I pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ welcome to Christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed transformed destinies jesus we really thank you you can do without us you've done it before without us but we thank you for making us a part of what you're doing in this season thank you for granting us the grace to take the influence of the kingdom to borders beyond this local environment it's a privilege and we thank you lord we pray that the fruits will abide in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord please can you help me with this fan please hallelujah we bless the name of the lord for the privilege we are to start a series tonight um, but I may suspend it for next week. It's supposed to be a very powerful series. I know how prepared we have been. But the Lord just put something in my heart. Um, in fact, I was about to send some materials for printing that I'll be using tonight. Um, and the Lord just put something very important in my heart that I think would be a preamble to this series. And I trust that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Pick up your Bibles. And let's look at the word of God. I love the word of God. Because it is the only instrument that can help me understand the ways of God. The Bible is a very interesting book, unlike novels or many other books that have been written by religious founders and people who have documented their convictions. The Bible is able to convey to any man the realities of the spirit, the very mind of God. Second Timothy chapter 3. It's good to see everyone. I'll read just two verses and then we'll teach. Verse 16. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. If you're there, say Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man. And he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable anything the Bible tells you is profitable. I think you should pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable. And so we spend time, we spend resources. Um, for instance, being gainfully employed is profitable. So we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed. We are happy. Right? We consider marriage to be profitable. Having children is profitable. 
So when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child, we all celebrate. There are things in our lives that are profitable. And here Paul is telling his son in the gospel, he's saying, look, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. He said, and is profitable. Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. To the end that whoever commits himself to them, he says that the man of God may be what? The word perfect there is the word mature. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished. I like that. Not just furnished. He said thoroughly furnished unto how many? All good works. Please listen to me. We all want to see results in our lives. We all want to be mightily used by God in different areas. It's been the cry of people. That's why many of us are gathered here, trusting that we'll learn of the ways of God. And here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of God mature. Then is able to make him thoroughly furnished. He uses a language that is used in, in, in furniture work. When you know how furniture is, the finishing you put on it, you, you file it, you polish it. And it looks beautiful. It says thoroughly furnished. So you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal. So minimal. Anyone can trust you. Your voice can be taken as the voice of God. That's what it means to be thoroughly furnished. Such that when you communicate truths to people, they don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing. They have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited. Your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction. And so their hearts are open to receive. Then he says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works unto the healing ministry unto delivering people unto saving people right acts 10 38 says how um, god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing what good see that so when the bible talks of good works anything that is able to reproduce the victory the life the power the love, the might of God is considered to be good works. Good works are not ambitions. When the Bible talks about good works, it's not talking about your ambition. Everything that you commit yourself to under Christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain, and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them. That is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down. And I don't even know what. Because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um, is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination we mean that they have been able to educate their minds they have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension and they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance 
are we together now and so we call them the enlightened ones even in the world they have groups and cults that they call illuminati and and those people pastor is that you god bless you i like us to bless him great man of god all the way from kaduna thank you please can you stand up let's honor you thank you so much i'm happy to see you god bless you hallelujah we're to have a great meeting in his church and um we couldn't make it but um we're coming we're coming loaded and we'll bless the whole church god bless you sir thank you for coming hallelujah ignorance is dangerous ignorance is destructive the strength of darkness is ignorance the strength of darkness in the life of a man in the life of a pastor in the life of a leader is ignorance what is ignorance absence of light absence of strategy absence of illumination absence of understanding say amen there is so much ignorance in the body we have to contend with god's light to drive away this darkness otherwise the days that are coming will um will embarrass us very seriously the days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines is either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you're doing the disciples kept walking with jesus they thought they were understanding what he was teaching and one time he went up to the mount of transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition have you read that in scripture and they were so listen let me tell you something that you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened I'm going to tell you what illumination is. Those guys had been with Jesus. They heard him every time. And now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves, trying everything they knew to do. And here comes Jesus from the mountain. And then they brought the man. They said, your disciples could not heal him. And, and they just stood dumbfounded, hoping Jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special. And Jesus proved them wrong isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special it's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area it cancels out every excuse you would have given hallelujah that's why they hated jesus they hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses. Madam, Look, this and that and that, and she believed it. But here comes Jesus. And then he lays hands on her and even tells her, Madam, I'm surprised you are sick. Didn't they teach you? All the people who have been teaching every time, didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham? Did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him? Ah, the woman said, I, I, nobody told me. And the, the scribes were standing there hoping Jesus would fail. And to their shame, he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight and they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. We never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Every 
everything in your life is at the mercy of light everything in your life is at the mercy of light please hear me and take what i'm saying seriously your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light your illumination your depth of spiritual enlightenment the quality of your ministry the quality of your life he says my son pay attention to my words he says incline them to your ears do not let them depart from you he said they are life to those who find them not those who hear about it they are life to those who found them and health to their flesh he says in isaiah 60 verse 1 what's the first word arise arise can we get amplified is it possible I like the way Ad, Ad, Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. He says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says, arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available, but until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt, Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we... we of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me, there's a cause, there's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost. That only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. 
we travel around and I look at people outside and I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around, victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself that I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, for behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now, this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. Is a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable. But they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry. But it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they have been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, Forget the fact that we insult you. We know. We know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. 
anything you can any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork it was not founded upon truth it was founded upon luck any dimension listen to me very importantly any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again it didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous let me tell you what deceives us sometimes you I, i've taught you about prophetic atmospheres you can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with god and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it and so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen you will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination are we together now see one of the challenges with the body of christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because i'm quoting them you don't have to be a child of god to be able to quote scripture the concept of memory is a psychological thing anybody can learn it we teach children to recite memory verse Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the, the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But he's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The results there 
is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise you will have to be very humble to admit what i'm telling you hallelujah gentiles will come to your light your assignment is not to run around chasing people looking for favor no the reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light the bible says gentiles shall come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising if you want to come out of the situations that surround your life the first key is light the first key is illumination there is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life are we, are we together please listen are we together there is something you don't know right now there is something you can know that will change your life forever i sit down and i look at what the lord has shown me now and i look at what i used to know four five six years years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do i have light or do i just have the letter do i have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply. Write those two words. Understanding and application. These are the two things that make the word of God profit you. Understanding and application. In all your getting, he says get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says, honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous 
I rather stay with I rather stay with a herbalist. A herbalist is more friendly, at least he's passionate about something, than, than a careless person who has no passion. His ignorance will affect you. Don't forget, people have atmospheres. Right? The same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease. What do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you? What do you know? What is your guarantee for a blessed life? I think I'm fine. You are joking. You are really joking. I went to school. You are joking two times. I'm very serious. I mean, jokes apart. I'm really serious this night. What do you know that will make you excel in ministry? I'm a man of God. They laid hands on me. You are really joking. What do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing. I'm showing you all the areas. When I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow he's in theater art. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic. It's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life. And the life of others. Do you know the danger, especially as a leader? Pastors hear this. You see, when people come, they submit to your tutelage. This is the danger. So, if while you are ignorant, they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day God delivers you. And you will hope that they are around when he delivers you. So you can tell them, look, I've been misleading you. Here's the correction. What if you are not there? They travel with that ignorance, start their own churches too. And the ignorance spreads. Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in health? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. 
right? He said, not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation? There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, is not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, 
the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village and that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out your ignorance if you allow it too long you may be caught up in that tragedy are we together this is what i tell myself all the time joshua selman you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life and the key is the word of god listen 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 no other no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of god make no mistakes about it i've read a lot of books i've read psychology books i've read business books i've read all kinds of things any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of god is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world the bible calls their light darkness are we together now i i see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church whenever we are teaching certain things especially about success we we push the word of god out and we say just leave bible this one we are now talking common sense Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Keys that open doors. These are ancient keys, brothers and sisters. Those, see, there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before. The Bible lists them in Hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we're guessing over our finances we're guessing over ministry we're guessing over the anointing i think i'm anointed no you are not if you are anointed there should be an evidence if there is no evidence you are not calm down and look for the keys hallelujah if what happened to you last year remains with you this year then it's your fault we must contend for light everybody said there is a light that can deliver me everybody said there is a key that can open that door brothers and sisters there is no door that is made without a key but every door is at the mercy of the key he said i have given to it's been given to you to know the mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom what keeps you in divine health look at sicknesses flying all around you enter a restaurant you don't even know where they got the water from and you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means I'm going to die young. What do you understand by the life of God? When the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. That God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. It 
sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time. Come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do. Quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these keys not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. <laughs> All right, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard. Same church, same ministry, same business, same academics, same Nigeria. Play, go ahead. Anything. Same keyboard. That guy said his government. That guy said it's, it's, it's Nigeria that is not giving job. That guy says machines that cause cancer. I mean, look at this. Listen, the Bible. Now, watch this. When everybody is in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out, what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you 
for what you carry. Is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you? They started it quietly, but now they are open about it. Everybody is telling you, you are really a nuisance to me. Pastors, who is seeking you? Who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick, his problem dies. Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, you say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and build yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own, even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say, the, I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if, you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed, although you are in a place of tremendous change pride familiarity you do not discern you do not discern please listen to me the bible says you don't discern the lord's body and for that reason many are weak many are sick oh i've had koinonia message activating breakthrough destiny i've had it i was even there they used me as an example and you think that letter is illumination and somebody somewhere in one one room made with mud will download it and say lord i have found it i found the key so destiny help us and be praying it and the holy ghost will say this is it a woman came from benway state i think i, I can't remember last year or so this woman came with her husband they were pastors for many years they had struggled it's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper you pay for everything by yourself <laughs> when when the woman listen when the woman i don't know how i think one somebody here in, in koinonia went there and gave her just that message activating breakthroughs the ministry of destiny helpers she received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result Stirring up expectations in people. 
Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God will do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit, not good dressing, not English, not even Rema. He says, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name. We will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. In your name. We will rise. I don't Rounds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what I've come to do. Casting rounds, lifting hands, bowing hearts, is what I've come to do. Listen, every day of my life. I listen to at least one koinonia message. I know there are uncommon mysteries. Forget that it came through me. I have learned many things from my messages than many messages. I listen to it and I'm praying. And when is the time when apostle is prophesying, I kneel down and I lift my hands as he's speaking. See, listen, you have to learn what I'm telling you. Because this year, make up your mind not to cheat yourself. See, arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations during my retreat for this year. I said, any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this. No matter how you deceive me, I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? 
God asked me to pause with the series, we'll start because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man. A man must appear for that door to open. So my prayer is very strategic and intentional. I don't pray stupid prayers. I pray with intelligence. Lord, where are the helpers? I call them because I know if a helper does not appear, that door will not open. And here comes the helper because I know how to call them. They never come on their own. They are always called. You have been waiting for them. You will wait forever. There is a mystery that calls helpers. Are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth. I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program. Because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody. I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming so there are so many things sucking out of me time is so limited for me but many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activate us what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the bible that strangers shall feed your flock which one is uncle again but in your mind according to what you know if your uncle does not pick your call after two days you are dead who told you Aya. have you not had the ravens brought bread for elijah where did the ravens come from lack of light has limited us please hear what i'm saying god can raise helpers for you you have tied god how many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people it's because we have not put balloon around the church that's why people are not coming no and we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and 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 we have protocol and pa no power no grace no understanding no results the trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused lean and hungry say i'm tired of guessing say it again i don't know how to beg you and make you believe what i'm saying I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. 
listen this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you when you hold on to it go to bed you have entered your sabbath see I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, yeah, I can say it, oh. My goodness. I wave poverty by, it waved me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying, Jambi is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you. With that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part way. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, ba, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. There are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance. 
and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father God is telling you this way the authority over your life is saying this way and people say submit what have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more I'm so aware of my ignorance so I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do Lord I need you more and I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said do i understand what is don't think what you think god said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer you say five I say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it if i am not getting results in my life right now and pastor femi is getting results and i try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious i'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers oh yes they know where to get answers i told you was it last week or week before last that if i am an unbeliever when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I wouldn't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I will wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I will bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church members will hold charm and come for service with it the moment they are talking before altar call somebody will stand up and say sir this guy bought for you this is the charm that brought it and i can throw it if you can prove it otherwise that's what happened between moses and pharaoh he had to take the rod and pharaoh said get out of this place you grew up you ate the food that this god ra brought now you are coming to destroy it and moses said i found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen 
Moses said, as at that time, I thought Ra was the highest of the gods. And so my allegiance, but I found, I found somebody in the wilderness. And he called himself, I am. And he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty. And when he swallowed up this, and after nine, ten plagues, Pharaoh had to give up. Pastors, let's stop deceiving people. We know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth. We know where we have results and where we don't have results. Let's admit it and not explain. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It's waiting for the manifestation. There are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now. Some of them have come desperate to receive something. Imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that. If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing, the mysteries of favor, the mysteries of advancement, the mysteries of breakthrough, the mysteries of the anointing, the mysteries of grace. Release it upon me, O oh God. If God answers that prayer, you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you. It's not because there is nobody to give you the job. There is something you have not done. 
the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if it now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now oh a lecturer promised me that this time around i will get a in my project what if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense then you fail woe to him that puts his strength in a man Oh, God said, I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You too ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us you've raised five hundred thousand. One sickness will wipe it away but you can walk certain principles and a man will like his sleep in the night and get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the Bible says that we not pray amiss. Mothers, fathers, everybody, please hear me. There is a way out of everything, I believe. There is a way out of everything. Sister, that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation. Just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray. One of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ I know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change all men are not equal criticize me but just listen all men are not equal equal if you take that mindset this is not supposed to be a bad statement please don't misunderstand me i wish it were a lie but it's the truth all men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in corinth he said because you cannot discern the lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning i'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what god has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you will leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen I'm talking about light and illumination the bible says let the word of christ dwell in us in all richness colossians 3 16. but you see one of the greatest blessings of god to the church outside the holy spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with god but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself you hear me say this thing all the time there, no matter how arrogant you are 
no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions that it will take a representative of these ministries. It's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed. There are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries. And many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds. I've, I've told you here. Just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ. Serve God with truth and dignity. There are many of our parents that are grounded. God will invite a man to their churches. And they will look at the person and say, this young guy. Or God will invite somebody who will come. And maybe the person cannot speak English very well. And they now sit down intellectually. And the man is teaching. He may not be able to talk very well, but there is an office he occupies. Are we together now? He may talk and mix it with language, and you are there calculating intellectually. Say, I thought I, I need somebody with Rema. Tell me Greek and Hebrew words. Whereas the person sent, he came out dressed like John, like, like, like a prophet. Even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel. Because when he came, he looked for the one who that mantle was upon. That foundational mantle. John said, ah, I've seen you. Say, no, suffer it to be so. I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around. There was a pastor friend, I used to watch him um the guy loves me so much he admires me but i think for a very long time i used to see him he just comes around laughs around when they are prophesying or speaking he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand he just he just lift his hands as if he's waving and i knew that this guy would never receive anything in his mind he thinks he will receive let me tell you something there are requirements from receiving from these gifts one of the requirements is honor 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 you must honor both the person and the office he says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish you were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families. And I've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as I watched these families go down in penury. Because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? please hear what i'm saying koinonia don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time, when sickness, when the serpents were destroying the people, nothing happened to Moses. Question, what did the snake see that made them not to bite Moses? It's in your Bible. Right? That he told him, lift up a serpent. Is it not true? Look at how people were immune in the Bible. Things were happening to others. Elijah, there was famine. He never was even concerned about the famine. Because he knew that nothing would happen to him. There was famine in Samaria. Elisha came. He was not saying, Ay, I'm dying. Give me food. He came and saw women eating their children. I said, what happened? There was another mystery that gave him supply. Brothers and sisters, there is a way out. 
of every situation in your life. You can come to a man of God to pray for you. But you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm. Do you know even if Jesus appears right now, there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged. Yes, absolutely. Don't you think because he is Jesus, he will change. The law is still the same. If you cannot honor his representatives, then you do not honor him. The result will still be the same. Who told, look at how many parents, please, you are a pastor. How, think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say, man of God. You see, let me tell you something. Many people just believe that ministers, and, and, and newspapers have made this happen. They believe ministers of the gospel are daft people, fraudulent people, how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves. That's the mindset newspaper gives. And many people carry that faulty mindset. And some of us, as young as we are, that's our thinking. Look how our families are suffering. You pray individually and say, God, help. God said, I answered the prayer sins. Open your eyes and see. You have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears. You are there... A, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way I have ministered to people and their lives have changed. A, a woman gave a testimony and this is true. This is, I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry. The woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message. And she said she always used to ignore it because, you know, she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that. You, you know what I'm saying? And one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then God was, you know, using my voice to just challenge her and say, go and listen to that message and change your story. She said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone. Listen, there was someone that had owed her for a long time. As soon as she transferred that text message, just the text as in, uh, you know how it, you transfer a message, it just touched her phone. That was how the person called her and said, where are you? Come and meet me at the bank. The woman said, this is a lie. What is going on here? It will only work for those who already have honor presiding them. Otherwise, you will pass it like this and move on. When the child of the Shunammite woman died, she was not confused. She knew where to run to. She said, saddle your ass. He said, don't stop. Whoever asks you is all well, say it is well. And he sent Gehazi. Gehazi came and looked at the woman. He said, it's all well. She said, it's well. Give me a chance. I know the person I'm looking for. And she went there and said, you represented something in the spirit that brought this child. Otherwise, this child would never have come. Know what to do with this child. She put his office under pressure. Elisha tried everything, spoke. The child refused to wake up and he took his mantle. He said, even if it's for me to be foolish. See, there is a way you can honor a man of God and put pressure on his office. Not anoint him, his office. It will force him to release something into your life. When I say honor, I don't mean money. A deep, a deep seated. There are few men of God I've met in my life. And the way I honored them when they were speaking and blessing me, I knew it came from their spirit. I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And you're like, oh God, thank you. And you just throw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tithing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you, just, you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope, you just come and stand and say, oh yeah, God, take. No. 
when Abraham met Melchizedek, king of Salem, that ancient city. Listen, do you know it was after he gave the tithe, immediately God spoke to him and said, fear not. He was teaching him a mystery. He said, I'm about to bless you. It takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial. So fear not. There is something I'm about to open in your life that will make people say, when, when did it happen? He said, don't be afraid. I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward, he, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him, you see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding understanding it was an impartation just one mystery i've shared with you do you know if you hold on to this mystery this law of honor this year alone you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime i promise you just this law just this law just this law something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach God with a stubborn heart. You approach God with a childlike heart. Please, please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm about to pray for you. For heaven's sake, believe the things you hear me say. I love you too much to mislead you. Gentiles, please give us Isaiah 60 again. Verse 3. This is the year that Gentiles should come to your light. This is the year it should happen. That you see somebody get up and come and meet you. I mean, Gentiles coming to your light. They come with their blessings. When Jesus was born, the wise men saw his star. They started looking for it with gold, frankincense. When they looked at Jesus, they looked at a baby, but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby. They started bowing down. They didn't wait until he became an adult. They didn't say, let's see, let's watch if he becomes a serious man. They knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down. If wise men could bow to a baby, bow to certain principles and change your life forever. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I shared with you tonight? Please. The body of Christ is not lacking revelation. What we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah Saul Kai oh my goodness Saul's donkey was missing his father Kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey I hope you know 
naturally speaking. Three days, they could not find the donkey. And they said, you know what? Let's not waste our time. There is a man. There is a man. This man, there is a prophet. There is a man of God. And they said, ah, there's nothing to take to him. They were smart enough. And the moment they went to the gate, at the gates, they saw him. And he looked at them. Do you know what he told them? He said, go and wait for me and I will tell you everything in your heart. Do you know what is a mountain to you? Is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you. What looks like a mountain? You are there complaining about house rent and God is saying, no, 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 no. Everybody is growing, but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see. Look at, at once they met Samuel. Samuel said, I will tell you every, he didn't say I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there, wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? A man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah. I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums. Story building. Three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you. He didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up. The Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again and he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron. No grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah, so this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the, the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head and say, I lived with this guy forever. I, he was my roommate, yet I didn't have the eyes to see. I was in his church. I was even an usher. There was capacity like this to help me. Look at Gehazi, foolish man. If you wanted money, if, if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money, is it not to kneel down and beg? Rather than going to lie. You see why he's foolish? Very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any mantle. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, my father, change my story. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. He came out, ate the children and disappeared. What kind? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, he said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Honor. Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away. It can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it. I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. 
less than 24 hours less than 24 hours what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart lift up your hands and thank the lord for this word tonight illumination the grace that comes hear me when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor thank you lord for this word I'd like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can leave i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job Lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God. Show me what I need to do. Shela those outside make sure you are praying jesus brought you here to change your life forever light 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 sika barato soto predege de bele de bos saka prata seta le pratica de koshoto prada na bala na bala na ba hallelujah hallelujah i want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I prayed and fasted, nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me everybody runs away from me even those who want to help me change their mind something must be wrong somewhere i admit tonight that i need help lord i pray for my academic it's been from one tragedy to another there, there's got to be a way out hallelujah hallelujah listen we are still praying i like you to pray and say lord i make a vow before you i'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray 
grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around aparato soto prende que de balada bosh rakata parada bosh come on be angry with the challenges in your life and pray 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 I was studying I wanted to find out the secret of church growth I've heard people say it I've listened to them I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out are we together two more prayer points you're going to pray and say Lord every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now I receive grace to make amendments go ahead and pray Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight. Every principle that should have opened a door for me, I ignored it out of pride. I ignored it out of ignorance. I, I ignored it out of complacency. And laziness tonight oh God I cry tonight oh God I cry pray pray shake it take it and never go so fast and propose go pros can they push repeat it so to take it and go chat the other one man the brass color press Kalia the brass cover she can tell you about it hallelujah he said I commend you I commend you to the word of his grace he said he's able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified you have ignored the word and you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give or you have been in close touch with the word but just growing in knowledge without revelation Revelation is not knowing what scripture has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. God said it's not revelation, it's prophecy. It takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said it's prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a revelation into a, a manifestation in your life many of us are carrying god said wonderful but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation there is a there is an alignment there is a path you have to play please pray again and say lord what have i ignored that is responsible for where i am open my eyes i will make amends i will make amends in the name of jesus christ Pray. Sheke parot staban dia karaba da baladaba. Ebra ko soto pras ke baria da baladaba. Raka parado soto pres ke pereke telebos. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know? That there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer are we together mm. this is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer there is a direct relationship between
between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3, there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery. That any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars. He said, he that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon, speaking of wisdom, said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Just for winning souls, you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom. And many of us want to be wise. We want to do all of that. And you watch sinners go to hell. You are coming from meeting and you watch people around. You are not passionate. You are embarrassed. The Bible says, He that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind here. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls. Transform. Souls. Genuinely saved. Souls established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. See, if you say you are growing spiritually, ask yourself, what parameter am I using to measure my growth? If you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of Rema, you are fooling yourself. At the end of it, you will cry. A small child who may not know much, but do much with what he or she knows, will be standing and excelling. Just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking English, and they will write the exam and get 40. And one obedient student, he follows the examples as taught. Every, he may not be so smart, but he's just too obedient to be average. The ways of the kingdom have been simplified. Follow it with total obedience and conviction and walk your way to a life of wonder. Do you know, especially for pastors, many pastors are stubborn, I tell you. They never listen. They never walk. This part of, this humility, the precepts of God, they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years. So they find out they are preaching more, they are fasting more, there's no result. Whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out. You see another man of God just come up with a heart panting after God. And you, you will look around this life and say, where is the results? There are spiritual laws. 
you don't guess them they are dear you follow them or you keep rumbling up and down let me tell you something with prophecy you see the realm of the spirit does not have time listen please the realm of the spirit does not operate with time are we together events only unfold according to the will of god not just according to the passage of time so the regulator of the activities in the realm of the spirit is the will of god not your clock but when it comes to the earth realm our activities are governed by time whether or not you want time is passing are we together now let me tell you something about prophecy prophecy has the ability listen please it has the ability to tap into the realm of the spirit and find out what would have been your prophetic destiny that has been altered in time are we together and by that grace of prophecy you can take it because there is no past and future in the spirit and so the devil may have messed up your five years but the prophetic is able to pick that five years and make it your tomorrow because there is no time listen listen prophecy does not just reveal it creates it makes possible what would never have been possible so the prophet looks at a woman and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway the prophetic word created it hallelujah this is the thing about God that truly makes me convinced that all things are possible all things are possible because whatever leaves you in the physical did not live in the spirit and there is still a system that can bring it to become your current day experience so a woman who should have given birth to five children and for whatever reason has been delayed prophecy is able to shift that miracle and make her have triplets and twins are we together now yes do you believe what i'm saying listen if you don't believe this then we're wasting our time because we're talking about the god of all possibilities i will die believing him he is faithful hallelujah let's look at just one more scripture john chapter 10 verse 10 jesus was teaching and he said this he says the thief cometh not king james the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy are we together but then he says i am come i am come it's a manifesto like you say vote me i want to do something for you and then he says look the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly other versions say to the fullest the bible identifies satan as a thief are we together and what is the character of a thief let me tell you a thief studies an environment and takes advantage of the vulnerability of the people second correct second Chron um, corinthians chapter 2 uh, i believe give us second corinthians chapter 2 holy spirit help me verse 11 there's a scripture that just came to my mind as i was talking too thank you lest satan should do what take advantage are you seeing that lest satan should do what take advantage of us it says for we are not ignorant of his methodology there is a system with which satan destroys people the first system is to study your vulnerability so he waited until jesus was hungry and he came through that angle of hunger are we together one of the many blessings of growing in the world is that you close every access point for satan to be able to take advantage in your life the area of the kingdom you are not furnished and established in will become the access point of darkness in your life are we together he said lest satan should take advantage of us we are christians but because of our inaccurate understanding of the systems of god satan can leverage on our ignorance satan can leverage on certain spiritual possibilities and buffet our lives write it down i've taught it again and again but i want to repeat it very quickly there are only three ways satan has access 
to people especially believers only three ways number one covenants covenants this is the system of transgenerational allegiance whether towards god or towards satan a covenant creates a platform for access regardless of the individual openness of the people a territory can have a covenant with god to find expression at all times when david was dedicating the temple he stood up and said oh lord whoever faces this temple in jerusalem and prays unto you we pray it's a covenant that you hearken to them so when daniel was about to be destroyed when they signed a law the bible says he opened his window towards jerusalem remembering the covenant are we together and the bible says he prayed covenants they are fraternities that we come into whether with god or with demon spirits that authorize certain levels of activities in lives in families and in territories please pay attention i'm building a conviction in us so that we'll pray a covenant is so powerful because in a covenant your your individual refusal or acceptance does not necessarily change things ordinarily are we together i give you an instance they did not consult with you to change fuel price because there is a covenant by birth you are a nigerian are we together so whatever happens to this country as an individual you can exempt yourself but as a territory we are under a common challenge are we together when jesus saw somebody who was born blind his disciples asked a question he said who sinned that this man was born blind he said him or his father in other words there was something in the teaching of jesus to them that had taught them that there can be things that transcend a generation are we together and transcend a territory now there are several people in a bid to bring balance to the exaggerated um, activities of demon spirits we have deceived people into believing that covenants do not have anything and so we have people jumping and say no way but there are 11 people in a family none of them is giving birth yet they are they do not want to admit that there is something wrong covenants are powerful covenants are respected in the realm of the spirit there is a law that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins so the word had to become a lamb and go through that condition for mankind to be saved there are families born again but they do not understand the systems of god your personal salvation does not affect your territory it takes an operation of the kingdom for that reality to be established it is not negating what christ has done the confusion here usually has come from an accurate or an inaccurate understanding of the prophetic speakings of god and the experiential manifestation follow me please when god speaks he speaks from the realm of his possibilities and he's prophetic in his communications he called things that be not as though they are are we together but when it comes to the experiential manifestation of the same there is a partnership from this earth realm to make it real in the eyes of god no one should go to hell is that true because the price has been paid are there still people dying and going to hell today yes does that mean the work of salvation is is is, is um is a failure no the people have not opened up their will there are many of us today by the grace of god who will be healed but scripture was not just written this night it's been written before our forefathers were born however tonight there is a principle we are going to engage in that will make it become real are we together now yeah listen sickness should give us an understanding that covenants are real if you are a Christian and you are tongue talking and you can still fall sick, that means you are a Christian and you can still be buffeted by demons. There is a spiritual logic to this. It is not insulting your salvation. It is to help you understand that there is, there is, there is an understanding that will give you freedom. Please, I want you to pay attention to this. Many individuals, especially those who love God, are victims of fraternities the goal of covenants is to create transgenerational allegiance whether to god or to the devil 
the missionaries came and brought the gospel of salvation but they did not bring the gospel of the kingdom so malaria killed them you call it malaria we know what killed them are we together because there are systems in the kingdom so you can be born again your eternal salvation can be secured but then because we do not understand the operations of the word we can just pretend and say everything is all right faith is not foolishness the end of faith is a manifestation if you are trying trying and nothing is happening i think it's it's very it's very humble to open up yourself and say look i see patterns the clearest proof of an existence of covenants is patterns similarity of happenings regardless of the individuals they rob your brother in a quiet bomb your sister is minding herself in benway they rob her too two of them were not discussing it because you see covenants give access to certain operations of of spiritual beings whether god or satan i can enter a covenant of righteousness with my family that can grant god access even someone who is an unbeliever can come under the corporate covering of that covenant that's what brought people out of egypt so long as there was blood whether the individuals believed or not for as long as their door a representative of the people had blood the angel of death passed covenants i have seen this i saw it in my own life i saw it in my own family i've seen this in the life of pastors i've seen this in the life of sincere people number two ignorance the second access point is a lest satan should take an advantage of us on the strength of our ignorance in this area ignorance ignorance incomplete understanding of the principles of the word or no understanding completely both of them in the spirit is called ignorance whether you know the principle or you know part of it is still ignorance because you are only having um, the Bible says you will arise and you will shine Isaiah 60 verse 1 not because you are tired of sitting but it says your light is come it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has the power to cause you to arise and shine ignorance that's why we spent three weeks expounding on the mysteries of the kingdom to help us understand the systems of God. Listen, the journey of a believer starts with Christ. It does not start with principles. It starts with an encounter of the person Christ. When you begin to study principles outside of an, the encounter of Christ, you will get into Scientology and witchcraft and mysticism and spiritism. You must encounter the object of your encounter is the person Jesus. Are we together from that standpoint of encounter he reveals himself to you he brings you to a point of intimacy and your reward for intimacy is power and that power is divided into two one power that comes from the understanding of the systems of god and another dimension of power that comes as a reward for intimacy so there are two dimensions of the operations of God's power. Number one is the dimension of his power that is programmed into his laws. By believing those laws, the power is released. Whether you are praying or not. Seed time and harvest is an example of such laws. You engage it and the power of God is released. Are we together? Yeah. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy so it is from that standpoint of encounter you begin to explore the systems of god the systems of god defines his way of operation and the moment you comprehend that then you will truly access power ignorance you can be born again and be ignorant number three disobedience the last access point of satan is disobedient willful refusal to comply with God's principles willful refusal that's disobedience you're not doing it out of ignorance the Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience 
is complete not when you start when it's complete Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says and it shall come to pass right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently Joshua verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 right the Lord was speaking to Joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 is not just hearing what god has said obedience is doing what god has said in john chapter 2 when the servants came to mary she said whatsoever he tells you to do he said do it hallelujah paul the apostle was encouraging the the early church and he said now that ye know these things in fact it wasn't just paul i think it was jesus himself he says now that ye know these things happy are ye if you do them now that you know happy are ye if you do them these brothers and sisters as mysterious as satan looks this is the only way you can find expression his possibilities are finite they are not infinite number one is covenants the strongest access point to satan or to, of satan into people's lives and then number two we have ignorance and number three disobedience and that's why we are gathered here tonight that god will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in christ and end this this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies and i pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you from the depth of my heart that as god begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I want you tonight to believe God. Do not come to God carelessly. Listen, the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God. Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, For without faith, it is impossible to please him he said for he that cometh unto god must come believing must believe that he is that means he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so every time you approach god you don't come to try let me find out whether god can touch this cancer let me find out whether god can end my captivity no you come to him believing say i'm a believer so tonight i want you to approach the mighty god knowing that he's able to do all things believe me you have your requests you have your needs take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in god it does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and god will change your story it doesn't take him time god is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light i really believe god and i came here tonight trusting that god will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why i'm taking out the time to speak to us very quickly let me just take the altar call now look up please let that be the first miracle tonight let's take the altar call
so that as we begin to move and just flow we'll just move in one single sweep there's a lot to do tonight and we want to save time so that we can finish on time I told you that there are three access points of Satan one covenant two ignorance three disobedience are we together John chapter 3 from verse 16 says for God so loved the world he said that he gave his one and only begotten son who is no longer his one and only but the first begotten of we because he has called many of us into glory are we together then he says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing I love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to jesus you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say lord i give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying i'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this there's got to be more than living my life the way i want i must come under authority and i know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice some of you have never made this decision to make jesus lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category i'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and god you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then we'll heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together i'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus you're saying Lord things are happening in my family I do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say Lord I'm not just coming to receive healing I'm coming to start a new life it's called Zoe God's very life not another kind the very life of God hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming 
we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where God is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now There are so many outside in all the overflows. It's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say, return home. He's calling you. He's calling you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to count one to ten. Wherever you are, please I'd like us to begin to celebrate them. Outside, inside, don't wait for others. You are returning to Christ and you are making this decision for the first time. Leave your seat and make your way quickly. One, we'll count one to ten. Don't wait for anybody. God bless you. They are coming. Two, please clear the way for them outside. Don't let no friends stop you. Jesus is calling you. No, no, no. You are doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend, please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. You've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done. Will the Lord really, really open up himself to me? And the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. I don't care whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet. Make your way to the front. This is serious business. I believe there are still people outside in the overflows the first the second overflow and across the road please make your way to the front we're going to wait for you one more minute we're going to wait for you we're going to wait for you please don't play games with God tonight this is your destiny he wants to bless you he says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 11 he says thoughts of peace thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We are all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed. You accept it with gratitude. Salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight. Are we together? And so I want you to be very proud of what you are doing. Whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification 
tonight I made Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord my God my King forever from today the hold of sin the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end this is a new beginning in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted as I pray for you father you see these hands lifted they have made genuine sincere commitments I pray that the Spirit of God that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and I pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you this is the best decision you would have made in your entire life hallelujah now I like you to follow okay this way we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you. There'll be a group of people to have your names, your details, and we'll follow you up. They'll be very brief so that you come back and join us. Um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get um, to the ministrations right away. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Let's honor them. Koinonia, bless them. Bless them. Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call on to me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. It says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call on to me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You 
are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life, tying down my destiny, tying down my progress, you come under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Oh, come on, Koinoni, are you praying? Every force Shabakata laba karia laba laba Mande kapras kabarata kareto supa Shekete prete kele baba 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 Rakata barato soto pregele belele bosh Embrakata lakate seketaba Seke pras kabarata labadash Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death. But he says, I advise you choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say, In the name of Jesus. I make a decision tonight I make a choice tonight that I must leave this place free I like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say I am determined I make a decision I make a decision shake it I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara Katalaba. Mambra Katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. Make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life. Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. They must be broken. They must be broken. I contend. I contend by faith. I contend by faith.
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. I like you to pray and say every area that is not working. Say it every area in my life that is not producing results. To now you come under the influence of the anointing. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Your finances may not be working. Your spiritual life may be working. Oh, you are praying your, to a new dimension of God. Your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. hallelujah hallelujah listen to the instruction the lord is giving me please listen let's walk together guys please let's walk together hallelujah praise the lord we are going to shout three times listen hallelujah because what i see in the realm of the spirit is like i'm standing on top of this building and i'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt that's what i'm saying and the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen, by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we are going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called Tehila. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three. When I count three, listen. I want you to shout from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. And then the second time we are going to shout. Listen. As surely as the God of heaven lives. By the third shout. In the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me. The wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three hallelujah hallelujah please all those under the anointing just bring them out but really it's from the third time are you ready for number two 
was shouting powers out of men's destinies was shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men are you ready one two three Hallelujah. Now be sensitive. Oh, I feel it on me. Here it comes. That grace. That unction. That grace. That unction. By the third shout, hear me. Angels will begin to move in dramatic ways. There will be an eruption of the power of God inside and outside. Are you ready? I make a decree in the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one ay, 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 ay. two three Go ahead. Go ahead. Get the Get the Get the I tell you, it's like volcano. That's what I see in the spirit. Falling on people. Falling on people. You baby. of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it thought. I call it thought. I call it thought. Mantles. Twenty one people. Stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand on that is apostolic anointing. I activate it. the realm of the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes 
and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready i command the chains be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now broken now there's a family God is liberating a whole family they are here I'm seeing God touch them right now giving them miracles hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say Lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope Send a word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you enter transport and you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing you in a car and you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family is that why you are here yes. your family you were saying if only you come here God will visit your family and God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I break that curse over your family by the power of the Holy Ghost it lives forever lift your hands and give Jesus praise lift your hands and give Jesus praise Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Uh, what's she doing? Uh, she's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Uh, she may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's ah. not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining yes. her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ madam can i talk to you please yes that madam that one with um yes please make sure you are praying god is touching people we just want to be fast i wish we had time no 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 you don't have to kneel down please stand up where are you coming from madam from jigawa jigawa state jigawa state yes I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here 
but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is she? I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand hold on I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people there are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you where are they where are they two other people where are they please come and stand i want to announce to you all of you that god will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you please i want you to believe i want you to believe me the things I see I may not be able to tell you right now because um, one of you has a problem with your husband I don't want to go into hold on I should I talk do you want me to talk calm down let me talk to you you came out let me talk madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance you believe what I'm saying you love God you are a sincere woman but your husband needs deliverance huh where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Mm. Huh? Like, am I vomit from drunkenness? Mm. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth now. Don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. The Lord is showing me a lady. You left the hospital this morning. Your mother is in the hospital. It's part of the reasons why you came here. Please, who is that? Your mother, you left her in the hospital. And you came here. Please, when you get that person, let me pray for her. Because God wants to do a miracle. I want to pray for you. The Bible says, what God has joined, let no man put asunder. God did not join you on any spirit entity. And he's going to deliver you. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Let her go. Now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam. Please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. His own money finishes on friend and friends and beer. Is that true? Is that true? It's true. Because I'm seeing him not only drink but buy him for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina. There is a woman from Katsina. 
a woman from Katsina that's what I'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from Katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from Katsina look at me stand up stand up madam stand up your time of breakthrough has come look at me the Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you when the Lord again shall turn your captivity he says you'll be like them that day madam you have cried enough in this miracle service the God of heaven is about to wipe your tears Mary Mary who is Mary 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 I know there are many Marys hold on please hold on let me call the Mary the Mary is in this row Mary you are seated here no 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 at the back you are wearing a dark cloth right here you didn't cover your head the Mary is in not like I don't know if it's a dark cloth like it has flower it's a gown it's a gown straight down gown not gown with skirt is there someone like that Mary this row the angel of the Lord is there is it a gown or someone I'm seeing something with flower is there someone like that please find out Mary I need to talk to that person I need to talk to that person you're the one okay well come I'll talk to you madam where are you from I'm from Akwaibo you are from Akwaibo I stayed in Katsina are you, are you married yes where is your husband he's in Katsina I have to pray for you God wants to give you breakthrough my goodness lift your hands I'm telling you I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels watch what happens in the congregation right now angels 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 bringing impartation to people I just saw like a wind in the spirit angels cutting away things that's what I'm seeing angels cutting away things from people they are removing things in people's bodies that's what I see like in a slimy substance living people this is breakthrough breakthrough God is giving people breakthrough hallelujah ma let me pray for you what do you do ma hallelujah hold on I'm looking at this woman don't be afraid correct me if I'm wrong I'm looking at you where is Kasham I'm looking at you ma and I'm seeing her name on your head and I was wondering and the Lord no 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 hold on come come I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady Kasham on her head and I thought your name is Kasham but the Lord told me it's not Kasham the, what she's practicing is what you are now what what are you doing I'm a nurse what are you doing I'm a nurse you're a nurse that's what I'm seeing in the spirit that's what God is telling me because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head and the Lord said I should call her and make see this is not diabolic Hosea chapter 12 it says I have spoken to you by the prophet I have multiplied visions he said I have spoken to you in similitudes this is not jamboree we have a lot of things to do God is locating people and when he's doing it for one he's doing it for many people time will not allow for everybody to be called but I just want you to believe believe in what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ that's that's the that's the only reason why you are here ma i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord promoting you and lifting you you believe that if god grants grace you will return and testify hold my hands ma in the name of jesus christ may the god of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of jesus ma i want to pray for you where are you from please i'm from anambra but I'm from Jigawa. I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. You are a nurse too. Yes. I want to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body. And this is not a nice, this is not something I will even say. The devil wants to put it in your body, but will take authority over it right now. Please hold my hands, man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he will fortify her. I command that spirit to leave you right now. Out!
devil wants to put sickness in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ ma look at me the pain is living and you are going free you have cried I have I'm seeing a woman who has cried but God is stepping in hold my hands in the name of Jesus Lord the grace that makes things happen may that grace bring this woman out of pain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want to pray for you come stand here I want to pray there's bad luck in your family eh? serious bad luck where's your father Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Emeka the Lord is ministering to me I'm hearing the name of someone Emeka the Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Emeka you are outside I'm seeing two Emeka coming I tell you I see like a screen one you have beard one you are wearing white Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. And the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business. But the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not. I'm, we are not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power. It's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ there is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing just carry her like that and bring her to me there is a word no it's inside here it's not outside right here carry her like that and bring her it's a message just carry her like that and bring her this is what i see in the realm of the spirit as she's lying down like this that's what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and i'm hearing ezekiel 2 verse 2 it says and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet the lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family but the lord is bringing i'm hearing the word restoration and the lord is saying i should prophesy to you receive it in the name of jesus it comes upon you by the power of the holy spirit please bring this lady for me just just carry her carefully if she can please lift your voice and pray and say lord visit me in the name of the lord jesus christ I break every hold you have with her life in the name of Jesus I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit this is a lady who loves God but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ
I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I command freedom right now be free go let her go now by the blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands I want to pray before we pray for the sick there's something the Lord is showing me please I'd like you to lift your hands just do what I'm asking you to do lift your hands the power of God is going to come on certain people I'm seeing deliverance in families this is not just you you are standing for your loved ones I'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families and the Lord is saying one more time we should shout that name Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus as we shout Jesus I like you to shout all your heart at the count of three the moment you do that I see deliverance coming to families and what they could not do in many years will be done within one month what they could not do in many years will be done within one month in the name of Jesus one two three right now deliverance 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 Shakataba. families I command it inside and outside inside and outside deliverance what could not be done in 10 years in 10 years it will be done in one month what could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month what could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month hallelujah say after me in the name of Jesus say it in the name of Jesus every door stopping me from entering the next level right now I command that door broken lift your voice and begin to pray pray yourself to the next dimension doors are opening pray inside and outside doors are opening doors are opening doors are opening hallelujah 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 listen many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit but you see the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men just like this you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life just like this there are chains that tie men there are chains that hold down destinies there are chains please bring this lady for me yes this lady just this very lady just bring her I give the chains for him I give the chains I give the chains I give the chains I give the chains I give the chains, I give the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Uh, Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying, and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's restoring to you 
the spirit of prophecy that's what the lord is saying i should tell you he's restoring to you i saw an eagle fly and it entered you and the lord is saying he's restoring the spirit of prophecy 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 hallelujah i'm looking in the spirit and i'm seeing people carry load and god is saying i should bring down that load lift your hands lord where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them right now at the count of three let that load come off you right now one two three right now right now right now anyone carrying any load every load every load every load every load every load every load that is not of god every load that is not of god every load that is not of god must leave you must leave you must leave you must leave you hallelujah hallelujah before we are going to be very fast hallelujah i was walking and the lord said i should go back praise the lord please don't mind me just allow me to do what the lord is saying and the lord is saying i should walk right here outside right and go outside please hear me and the lord is saying as i walk for every road that i pass if there is a spirit holding your destiny it must leave you please believe me shake karababa i lift my hands right now right now as i'm passing the anointing of the spirit is touching people destroying yokes destroying yokes destroying yokes right now destroying yokes from my left and my right destroying yokes any spirit tying down any man's destiny right now 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 every spirit every spirit every spirit every spirit now listen to me those outside don't be afraid it will not rain but watch this lift your hands i'm going to walk this way and the power of the holy ghost you are enduring this rain as i walk through any spirit tie your life must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now i release everybody from bondage 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 right now i stretch my hands i stretch my hands i stretch my hands right now i stretch my hands i stand by an anointing as i pass your role any devil tying you will let you go right now as i pass your role as i pass your role, as i pass your role as i pass your role, as I pass your role now right responsible for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same i came out to join you <laughs> hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around. We are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. 
as many who can come in don't worry just push them in i know it will be a bit stuffy but push as many people everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray Every force Hallelujah Now, hold on I know that there are so many people coming in Just give them room to come in Just make every adjustment Not all may be able to come in but it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice we want to pray for the sick now now please be careful so we don't have people marching on people hallelujah we are going to do two things at the same time all those who came trusting God for healing now is your time please walk with the protocol walk with the ushers I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here don't match the people in front while they are doing that, ushers, begin to pass your prayer request. Begin to pass your prayer request. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Power to break every chain, break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing, a strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. Hallelujah. Now we are going to minister to the sick. Please hear me. No matter what the situation is, as you stand right here. I want you to believe God for healing. You've heard the testimonies of people. You've seen the things that God is doing in this place. Don't make the place rowdy. Just be orderly. As we pray for you. Just a touch. And you return back. We may not have the time to take testimonies. Hallelujah. Please say to me, you will join me. Where's Pastor Jakes? I'm glad to have them around. And they'll make this work easy. The anointed people. As we pray for you, I want you to believe God for healing. The moment you are prayed for, as you walk back to your seat, do what you couldn't do before. Don't just sit down and hope you are healed. The Bible says they came to hear and to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. Everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living hallelujah worship team you help us while we minister pastor jakes Jimmy, please we are going to pray for you in the name of the lord jesus i want you to believe in the god that heals in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father make sure you are praying in tongues don't just be whiling away time drop your prayer request and be praying pray in the spirit and say lord you are going to visit me there 
as a God of wonders. Hallelujah. Our time is spent, but I want you to make sure that you participate. We're going to pray on this right now. And then afterwards, um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives. Then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, where are you? Please, can you come and join us? Um, we're going to pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way I have dropped this that's how I've dropped every challenge in my life I'd like you to pray please pray Koinonia open your mouth inside outside online please join us we are going to lay our hands prophetically on this request as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus, make sure you pray from the depth of your heart. Father, we agree with you. We agree with you. All kinds of miracles, impossible situations. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request to God. Shakata prakata kata kash. Rekata kata 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 bosh. Maprakata prosoto bosh. Elekata prakata pere koto soprata kata balada bosh. Mata shata takata balada balada bosh. Pray, prophesy. We're speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals. Visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. In Dalukos, they looked unto you and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Shame is taken away totally and completely. Ah, the embargo is lifted. 
Ah, I hear God saying, affliction shall not arise again the second time. Allah, it is done it is done says the spirit of God it is done oh glory be to God go ahead and rejoice and give God praise hallelujah 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 please lift your hands and receive the prophecy this is where God is going to be changing life Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it higher, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in his name. I don't know. You reign in You will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign in You Hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I had a very serious encounter with God. And the Lord told me something. He said, I have put my word in your mouth. As you speak it, I will make it happen. That's what the Lord told me. Please, I want you to believe it. Oh, blessed is she that believes. Don't sit down and doubt and waste your time. There is a spiritual dimension to life. It's not just, I have taught you principles. Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be opened right now I speak to you Efata be open now be open now be open now be open now Open now. Be open now. That chain tying any man's destiny, tying the speed of your progress. You are moving, but you're not making impact. Right now, I release upon you an auction for speed. An auction, take it. An auction for speed. An auction for speed. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord, please help them. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He gathered his loins and ran on barefoot. He overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I don't know what you have done from January to now, but I prophesy from now till the end of June. Do what you have not done in five years. Shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said, God has given us our space. Where you have been begging for relevance, it's like there is no place for you in life. It's like there is no place. I stand 
under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life take your place in destiny take your place in ministry take your place in destiny take your place in ministry whatever has covered your glory whatever has covered your glory I stand tonight I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command let your glory be released now be released now be released now anyone here called jobless between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning sign listen there are some of us you are making progress but no help in your life you fight for everything by yourself you pay for everything by yourself when you are in trouble there's nobody to speak for you at the gates where are your helpers who stopped them from entering your life who said it must be this hard i go down on my knees i call your helpers by prophecy in the name of jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west receive of their ministry listen let me tell you there is nothing more tragic as having no helper no man can stand alone you need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny you need men to endorse you and say help him you can't have to explain yourself to everybody who is speaking for you i pray again whoever must appear in your life from now till june business help us financial help us marital help us career help us I call you forth I call you forth hallelujah listen lift your hands there are some of you your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets it made your life easy till something shuts you from visions and dreams I pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah Please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represent your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread I pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized Isaiah 48 verse 17 I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit I pray the grace that makes your hand productive take it now take it now take it now take it now the grace that makes your hand multiply take it now everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness 
career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we are all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happens to you when God lifts you one he multiplies your grace two he adds to your responsibility three he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically I pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you've not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please I want you to receive I told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now shake it receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far I pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called Hefziba and Pula, a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to Jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body 
for you to rise. May that prayer be answered. Let me say it again. Whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise. I said may that prayer be answered. Listen. The Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you. He said yes six. He will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. It was a revelation that was given Job. That men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men. I pray for you. Whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life, I release you right now. I release you right now. I release you right now. Hallelujah. The kind of finances your hands has not touched, I pray for you. Between now and the end of this month, may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. May God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. May God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. Anyone here marked for death, that death is eyeing you, waiting for the day you will get on the road, waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. We forbid the earth from receiving your body. We forbid the earth from receiving your body. There are five elements I'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth. Five elements all through scripture. The supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements. Number one is light. God is light. The entrance of thy word give it light. Let there be light. Number two, water. The fish and the birds of the air in Genesis came out of water. Water represents abundance. Number three, fire. Hallelujah. It's a mysterious instrument, not threatened by any other element, yet refines every other. Number four, wind. The mystery of sound. The mystery that takes sounds and realities. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. That sound came back in Acts chapter 2. A sound. Hallelujah. And the last element is the earth. The prophet said, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. He said, For from dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Hear me. I want to pray just one deep mystery for you. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every man makes contact with it. For you to be alive, you must make contact with the earth. Your feet must touch the ground. Your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching. No, 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 no. It's not amen. It's a mystery. The office where you are to be employed is on this ground. It's not in the air. Hear me, please. The bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth. And the prophet said, O oh, earth, you are a living thing. You are not just stones. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones. I pray for you. Whoever wants to disfavor you, just like the stars fought for Deborah, may the earth fight for you. May the earth fight for you. Quarter to shame. May a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out. Listen, when men say, let's see what will become of him, I pray a mystery, my goodness, another way, may God bring another mystery and deliver you in the name of Jesus. The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria we love our nation, we pray for them. And we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption that can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down, 
for you you will say there is a lifting up i prophesy a lifting up regardless of the recession this is still your year of multiplied grace hallelujah lift your hands and give god thanks thank him sincerely Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of prayer. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.